Welcome to the Day Weather Podcast Winter Outlook for 2022 to 2023. As we get into this late summer and early fall season, we decided to take a look at what we think the winter might look like. Now you're hearing about the Farmer's Almanac. There's other outlets on the internet and elsewhere that have already put out winter weather predictions. We're ready now to kind of take a stab at it to see what the winter may look like. What we're going to be able to try to do is tell you what the trends will be. We cannot tell you if it's going to be a white Christmas. We can't tell you what it's going to be like driving to your aunt's house on December 23rd. But what we can try to do is look at what's going on across the globe weather-wise, what we've seen historically in the past when patterns are similar, and try to make some educated guesses on what the outlook is going to be like. So the main climate factors we're looking at for this winter. La Nina continues. This has been an amazing La Nina. This will be the only third La Nina since 1950 that will have gone into three winters. So this intense La Nina, which has wreaked havoc, is extraordinary in terms of how long it has lasted. Will it continue? Well, we'll tell you because we think by spring we'll be in a neutral Enzo, it's called. Basically, La Nina should be over and the worst of the drought conditions for many areas of the central United States is gonna be over for now. So this is a really good trend. We were hoping last year at this time, La Nina would be gone by now, but it hung on for another season. The transition from La Nina to neutral conditions out in the Pacific is a bit of a wild card because during the cold season, La Nina is gonna shift around a little bit and go away and fade away. So. The winter starts in La Nina, but it ends probably not in La Nina. So that's going to make things a bit interesting. Analog years we're looking at. Analog years are years that we think are going to be similar to this upcoming winter season. Last year, we used the 2010-2011 analog. We're going to use it again this year, as well as the years, the winter season of 13 to 14. Sea surface changes in the winter and spring as we transition out of La Nina will be important. When those sea surfaces temperatures change will be really, really critical. We're also going to keep a really close eye on sea surface temperatures up in the Gulf of Alaska and the North Pacific, especially early in the season and mid-season because that drives sometimes whether or not we get these big cold Arctic outbreaks during the winter season or not. And we're well into the next solar cycle. We reached our solar minimum about a year and a half ago, we're now cycling into the next solar cycle, which lasts 11 years. That, from what we've seen in previous years, is also good news. Going into the next solar cycle a little bit deeper should help that La Nina pattern continue to fade away. We're gonna use the analog forecasting technique, which means less emphasis is gonna be put on computer modeling, and we're gonna take a really close look at the oceans. The oceans hold most of the energy that ends up in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is not great at storing energy, but the oceans are. So understanding the oceans and their interactions with the atmosphere is really important. We pay attention to solar influences as well as stratospheric influences. What happens way up high in the stratosphere can also influence how a winter season will go. And we also have less reliance on computer modeling. Computer modeling is important. We're going to show you some, but we're not going to base our forecast solely on computer modeling. We're going to throw in some of these other factors, and that includes an emphasis on historical databases of similar patterns we've seen before. This is the latest sea surface temperature map as of the recording of this video. The La Nina continues to show near the equator here. This very large expanse of cold water covers a lot of territory, and it's really important because this is the warmest part of the Pacific Ocean. And if it's colder, even by a half a degree or a degree Celsius, it releases less water vapor into the air, which means less rain and snow. So it's good that we are gonna see it fade away, but boy, is it gonna be stubborn. Also, notice the warm pool developing here in the North Pacific and the Gulf of Alaska. Now, if we go to see how long this La Nina is gone, anywhere you see these blue lines is when the Pacific has gone cold, the subtropical Pacific, and basically we've had a La Nina. You can see that this La Nina has been strong and robust, just as strong as and robust as the last really strong La Nina that happened in 2010 to 2012. That was a three-year La Nina as well. So these La Ninas have been intense, and that's one reason why the West has been so dry. 
it's because the subtropic Pacific has been colder, not warmer, colder subtropical oceans in the Pacific into the western United States makes a big, big difference in terms of how the western weather will evolve. Warmer and drier than normal conditions exist in La Nina states. So it's really important to see where we're going to go with that. Let's check out the drought monitor before we go into the long range forecast. This is the most recent drought monitor. Now I'm going to show you where it was a year ago and I want you to notice there are differences. One thing I want you to notice is there have been improvements in the drought conditions for some of you while they've gotten worse elsewhere. This is where we are with the latest drought monitor. This is last year at this time. At this time last year, it was the Northern Plains, the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies back in the California and this area here, that was the worst off. However, we have seen the Northern areas see some big improvements here. Not perfect, but really has improved. We've also seen some improvements here in the Pacific Northwest. We've seen improvements in parts of Colorado and Wyoming in the desert Southwest. However, a shiftward into parts of the Corn Belt in the Central and Southern Plains has definitely taken place over this summer season. So there we were a year ago, and then this is where we are now going forward. With the sea surface temperature pattern looking like this now, what did it look like a year ago? Well, it was quite different actually. The La Nina was still there, but not nearly as strong. We had some warmer water temperatures up in the North Pacific. However, the Gulf of Alaska at this time last year was actually a little bit cooler than normal. But this year, we've got a little bit of a warm pool up there, which could give us a little bit of early fall weather. Now let's look at the analog year of 2010. Notice in 2010, it was a very robust La Nina like we have now. We had a warm pool forming in the Gulf of Alaska, but we also had a lot of colder than average water off the coast of California. Well, we don't have that this year. So there are some differences last year and this year, those sea surface temperatures off the coast of California are warmer. So it's not an exact match. They usually aren't exact matches when we use analogs, but it's pretty close. Solar progression, where are we? Well, last year at this time, we were right here, just bottoming out and coming out of the solar cycle. Notice the red line here, this is the prediction of sunspot activity. Notice right now, the trend line is for the sun to be more active than the prediction. Now that doesn't mean it will continue. The prediction may end up falling short or bottoming out like this, but right now the sun is off to a rip roaring start into its new solar cycle. I wanna show you the projections of La Nina and whether or not we have an El Nino coming as we go forward using computer modeling. This green line here shows the average of all the computer models, all these squiggly lines are computer models. The forecast is for La Nina to persist through fall before crossing this 0.5 degrees Celsius line somewhere right around in this neighborhood here, which is basically right around January, December, maybe as early as December, but certainly by February, March, and April, we're into neutral status. Not in El Nino, but we're out of a La Nina. Now, last year, the, the modeling did the exact same thing, but this year our confidence in the modeling is a little bit higher. Here's another way to look at the modeling. The blue here shows La Nina going from the beginning of the year, staying strong, but see it weakening the blue, see it trending downward as we get into December, January, and February. The possibility, the gray bars of a neutral status, not an El Nino, not a La Nina, is gonna go up and the red here shows the probabilities of an El Nino. So the trend is better in the Pacific, better because if we can get rid of La Nina, that is a pattern which means less heat. It's a pattern that means more precipitation in the West. But to caution you, this is the graphic we showed you a year ago. The year ago forecast was the same. It was predicting that by this summer, La Nina was gonna be gone. It's not, obviously. So you gotta be careful with these predictions of sea surface temperatures. Models are just tools, they're not reality. However, our confidence is higher that we're further along in the solar cycle and the fact that having La Ninas go three years is rare, but not unheard of. Having them go four is highly unusual and we don't think that will happen. So let's take a look at the sea surface temperature anomaly forecast to kind of bolster what I just talked to you about. The blue area here is going to be the La Nina region. And I'm gonna step through here month by month to show you what the sea surface temperature anomalies will do. Also, 
Keep an eye on what's going on in the Gulf of Alaska, whether or not it's warm or cold. So this is for September, October, it's still there. November, still there. December, still there. By January, we're basically in a neutral status. Notice the warmer sea surface temperatures relative to the 30 year averages are starting to warm up again as we get into the early part of the new year in late December into January, while La Nina fades. This is February, this is March, and this is April. By April, it's completely gone. The Pacific has reversed the trend and is seeing sea surface temperature anomalies starting to warm up a little bit. Not thinking we're gonna go full-fledged El Nino, but we're getting more confident that this La Nina is about done. And notice these warmer sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Alaska. Warmer sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Alaska is a cold signal for Canada and a lot of the United States in the winter season. This is by May. By May, we're actually showing a little bit of a chance for a weak El Nino to form. Whether or not it happens, we'll see, but we like the trends that we're seeing here. So what does the winter look like? Going forward, this is the forecast we've put together for you. If we were to go back to the analog year of 2010 and 11, this is what the temperature forecast from November through March of that winter season was. The green and the blue represents temperatures, surface temperatures that were below average for that whole period. You see how cold it was in the Dakotas, Montana, northeastern Wyoming, into the Corn Belt, Plain States, all the way down to Florida. While temperatures weren't as cold west of the Continental Divide, into the Great Basin, and the southwest United States, we think this is going to be a somewhat similar pattern to what we saw that winter season. So when we take a look at our temperature anomaly forecast, we feel that the coldest weather from November through March will be in the Northern Plains, the Northeastern and Eastern Plains of Montana, in the Northeastern Wyoming, then into the Corn Belt, and the cold could go all the way down to the Gulf Coast, at least relative to average. The warmer temperatures relative to average will probably be central Southern California into Arizona and into the Great Basin. Notice the lighter shade of blue here is right up and near or just past the Continental Divide. That's where we're expecting temperatures to be the difference between near normal west of that line, below normal east of that line. And this would mean near normal temperature conditions here for the winter season in the southeastern United States. Precipitation anomaly, we feel that the north central and the northern half of the U.S. has the best chance for above normal snowfall especially in some of those north central parts of the United States, northeastern and central areas of the Rockies, and we're expecting that near average conditions will be found in California and the desert southwest. I'll talk a little bit more about California and the southwest United States here in a little bit, but it could be a really rough winter for those northern areas of the United States, including the Great Lakes, parts of the Midwest, could be a factor. So these are some of the highlights. Those are the analog seasons. If you want to back and look at your records, those are the winters that I think will be similar to this one. We do expect the fall season, basically mid-September through November, to bring a lot of variability. We're still going to be in a strong La Nina, and strong La Ninas bring you high variability. You can go from very warm to quite cold. You get these big swings. We call it weather whiplash. Until La Nina fades, the early part of winter could be subject to these swings. We're expecting a high probability of a colder than average winter, December through February, along and east of the divide and into the central and northern plains. The western part of the United States, basically west of the Continental Divide, the western slope of Colorado, into Idaho, into Utah, into the Great Basin states, that's kind of the dividing line. You at times may not see that cold come in while the cold stays on the other side of the mountains. Yes, we could have a lot of wind again, however, as long as La Nina is gone by spring, the wind will not be as bad this spring and winter as it was a year ago, which I think would make everybody happy. Rain and snow is gonna be better for California, the Great Basin and the Southern Rockies. However, it's not gonna be the winter season that gets everybody back to average. We need an El Nino to really get going again for California and the Southwest United States to really get wet again. I think that's coming in the winter of 23, 24, but probably not this winter. But parts of the far west will have a better winter season with precipitation than the last two years. Snowpack does look better for the Rockies Great Basin and the Pacific Northwest compared to a year ago. I wanna bring this up. When I say energy stress, 
is likely this winter. One thing we got to remember is how high and how elevated energy prices are right now. At the time we were making this video, natural gas was over $9. When it's $9 in August, you got to be concerned of what it's going to be like in December, January, or February. And we feel that not only a large part of the U.S. will have a colder than normal winter, but obviously Canada and I think Europe, the same parts of Europe that are, have had a very hot summer could see the reverse happen this winter and they could be as cold as they have been as hot this summer season. So energy is going to be a really big factor this winter across the Northern Hemisphere. So I'm not going to go through and read all of these verbatim. You can see them here on the screen. Pick out the location where you live or where you have interest in, and you can kind of see uh, on what our thinking is for parts of the Central and Western United States as we go through the winter season. So it's going to be different than last year. There's going to be some similarities, especially early in the season before we transition out of that La Nina. Thanks for watching our long range forecast. We'll see where we are from a year from now. Posted on the Day Weather YouTube site is last year's winter forecast. And you can see how well we did or didn't do and maybe how that will affect what we see going forward. Thanks for watching. Stay warm this winter.